Want to know the latest in soccer? Then listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast from MLS, the World Cup, and the Premier League. We've got you covered. The latest updates, the hottest matches, and news on the league's top players. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. David Beckham scores the goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Listen now. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast, where we discuss all of the news in the wide world of soccer, including the top games and competitions from all around the world. My name is Ben Brown. Alex is not in the studio today. He had some unfortunate car trouble, which forced him to leave the studio early. So I will be riding solo on this episode of the show. Got to make a solo run at things. I want to start the show off before we get into the the gist of it. I want to start off with the tragedy last week with Chapecoense, the soccer club from Brazil. The unfortunate plane accident. The, the plane ran out of fuel as they were traveling to Colombia for a regional championship game. About 76 people died on the plane. Only a few survivors so you have members of the team, players, coaches, journalists, people that work for Fox. You know, it's not just the players and the coaches that were harmed in and killed in the unfortunate tragic accident. It was people that were just trying to do their jobs. You know what I mean? You had flight attendants. You have, you have pilots. As I mentioned, the plane did run out of gas about six miles over the limit of what they were supposed to go. So it's it's definitely a, a very tough, very tough situation. You know, the whole soccer world has been mourning this loss since since last Tuesday, actually. So it's it's not a good it's not a good thing. Anything like this happens, I think that the world has really treated this very well and has paid respects to those who lost their lives extremely well. Every single game before the game, you have a moment of silence for. For the Chapecoense players and and coaches and everything that died on the on the plane accident, you have Ronaldinho, the Brazilian soccer legend, coming out of retirement to play for free for the rest of the season for the club. Since they lost so many players, you have other people from Iceland, from Argentina, wanting to step up and be a part of the team and play the rest of the season. Since obviously they would just have younger younger talent that's not on the the senior level right now. So. It's definitely it's definitely an unfortunate situation, but I think the whole world is treating this treating this really good and and really paying their respects right, and and that's what I want to do here on the show as well. So I want to just uh, you know say my heart, my my prayers, my thoughts all go out to all the families and friends, the supporters, the country of Brazil, everyone who was impacted by that tragic incident last week. It was definitely not a good thing. We saw it in the fifties with Manchester United. We saw it in the forties in the forties with Torino. I'm sorry. So. It's not a good thing, um, you know. It's definitely a scary situation, but you know we we must go on, and that's what we'll do here with the rest of the show. So I'm going to be talking about Champions League match day six. A lot of games are not really, I don't want to say important because every game is important. Obviously, you want to win, but every game won't really decide much. So I'm just going to obviously I'll talk about the whole schedule, but we'll just kind of touch on and highlight the games that are very very important. A lot of them being in Group B, you have Napoli and Benfica, and you have Dinamo Kiev and Besiktas. Those are the really important games in Group B. You have three teams who could technically still go through to the knockout stages. No one has clinched a spot in the round of 16. So we'll talk about that in the first segment of the show. Second segment, we're going to recap this week in soccer, a lot of the games, a lot of big, big games this weekend. We had El Clasico on Saturday between Real Madrid and Barcelona. The Eastern Conference second leg final in the MLS on Wednesday between Toronto FC and Montreal was an absolute classic that went to extra time. So we have our MLS Cup final set. That game will be on Saturday. We're going to preview that on the third segment of the show when we preview the rest of the week 
in soccer, a lot of the games coming up this weekend. But for the second segment, we'll just update you on some of the tables, some of the results, some of the big, big storylines coming out of this weekend. We had some big games in the Premier League, the Bundesliga, La Liga, as I mentioned, we had El Clasico, Serie A, and then there's a a few things I want to touch on in League One, which is the French League. PSG, another bad, bad loss, 3-0. And then also Monaco. Monaco, believe it or not, are the highest scoring team in Europe right now. I want to do a little bit of a profile on Monaco, really having a bounce back season from last year, as well as one specific player for Monaco, who, like I said, the last couple of years had some troubles in the Premier League with a few English sides. So I want to start off, guys, like I said, Champions League match day six. We have games tomorrow as well as Wednesday, as we always do the Champions League. Tomorrow we have PSG and Luda Goritz, Barcelona and Borussia Mönchengladbach. We have Bayern Munich and Atletico Madrid. We have Manchester City against Celtic. FC Basel will be hosting Arsenal, Benfica and Napoli. We have PSV Eidenhoven and FC Rostov, Dinamo Kiev and Besiktas. That closes out Tuesday. And for Wednesday, we have Tottenham against CSK Moscow. Porto will be playing Leicester City. Lyon and Sevilla will match up. Club Bruges against Copenhagen. That is actually a very important game. Porto and Copenhagen still technically eligible to be second in that group. Leicester City have won the group. As I mentioned, Leon and Sevilla, we have Bayer Leverkusen against Monaco, who Monaco and Leverkusen will be through in that group, and Monaco actually have clinched first place in that group. So pretty interesting there, but I, th- I would expect both these teams will be trying to go for the win. We have Ligia Varsva against Sporting Lisbon, Real Madrid against Borussia Dortmund, a very, very important game. And then Juventus against Dinamo Zagreb. So some of the games that are very, very important. I guess you can start with Group A. You have PSG hosting Luda Goritz, as well as FC Basel hosting Arsenal. PSG and Arsenal are tied atop Group A with 11 points. But PSG do have the tiebreaker over the English side because of away goals head-to-head. Arsenal with one goal in Paris. And then PSG with two goals in North London. So they do have that little bit of an edge. Also playing Luda Goritz, who have given up 13 goals through five games in the group stage. You have to imagine with them being at home and Luda Goritz, poor defense, that PSG are going to win that game pretty convincingly. Arsenal going on the road to face FC Basel in Switzerland. You you would imagine that Arsene Wenger and Arsenal will go with a strong side to try and win the game. Obviously, they can't control what Paris Saint-Germain do. So you have to imagine they're going to try and go for the win. Maybe PSG get a draw, maybe a little slip up. I mean, things happen. This is soccer after all. We get FC Rostov beat Bayern Munich in match day five. So, But they're obviously going to try and go for the win. But I imagine that PSG will get a victory, which will clinch top spot in Group A. They do have the big, big advantage. So then Group B. Group B is where it gets very, very interesting. As I mentioned, nobody in Group B has clinched a spot into the round of 16. You have Napoli and Benfica set to match up, and then Besiktas and Dinamo Kiev. Dinamo Kiev cannot go through with only two points. You have Napoli and Benfica who play each other and are tied with eight points each. Then you have Besiktas with seven. So you got to imagine that the Turkish side, Besiktas, should have an easy run of things with Dinamo Kiev. They have not got a single win through five games. Napoli and Benfica, very tough matchup. You have a side from Italy and Napoli and a side from Portugal and Benfica. I feel like Napoli are a better side. I would give the edge to Napoli in this one. And then it's going to be interesting because I think Besiktas are in a pretty good situation right now. Getting that draw against Benfica in match day five, they were down 3-0. They come all the way back to get a 3-3 draw. They're going to be playing Dinamo Kiev, who are the worst side in this group. So if Besiktas can get a win, that put them at 10 points. That would guarantee a spot. So if they win, they're in. You know what I mean? So that's all they have to do. With Napoli and Benfica, obviously if it's a draw, it gets a little dicey. You'd you'd have the edge to Napoli at that point. But, I mean, I think Besiktas are in a much better situation. I would expect them to win. I do give the edge to Napoli over Benfica as well. I think they're just simply a better side. And I think they're going to not have any trouble with beating Dinamo Kiev. I, I just I just really don't see it happening. All right, so, so Group C, Barcelona did already clinch the group with 12 points. 
Manchester City do have the edge. They will be playing Celtic with two. So all they need to do is get literally a point. Or if Barcelona do defeat Borussia Montengladbach, they will be through. I would imagine that Manchester City will at least get a point against Celtic. I don't. I don't really think they will have any trouble with that at all. I mean, Manchester City is a much better side than than Celtic. Celtic really play hard. I remember their three three draw against City in the first leg. Well, and I guess in the first time they met, but. So I, I guess that's definitely a good spot, but I think City will at least get a point. And Barcelona, I'm sure they'll rest a lot of players, but they should be able to beat Borussia Mönchengladbach. So now I want to turn my attention over to Wednesday. Look at Group G. Leicester City already clinched the group with 13 points, as I mentioned. Then you have Porto with 8, Copenhagen with 6, and Club Bruges with 0. So Leicester City will be playing Porto. Leicester already did clinch the group, so you have to imagine that the English champions will rest a lot of their players. Really no need to play them in match day six since they were already through and already won the group. So I think that gives an edge to Porto, who currently sit in second, a two-point edge over Copenhagen, who will be playing Club Bruges. Club Bruges have lost every single game this year in the Champions League. So Copenhagen, although they're not a really strong side, definitely a better side than Club Bruges has been so far in the tournament. So uh, you have to give the edge to Copenhagen. But Porto are going to have a big edge over Leicester City. Porto are going to have a lot to play for. They have not clinched a spot in the round of 16. Leicester City already winning their group. You would imagine they would rest a lot of guys. So you've got to give the edge to Porto in that situation. So I'll, I'll say that Leicester City drop points on Wednesday to Porto and that Copenhagen do defeat Club Bruges. If Porto do get a victory, then they're in no matter what Copenhagen do. So I guess the edge is, you know, the, the motivation is there. You know, that's all they need. All they need is a victory. And I, I think they'll get that done. So now I'll look, staying on Wednesday, we're going to look at Group F. We have Borussia, Dortmund, and Real Madrid. They have clinched spots in the round of 16. Dortmund with 13 right now and Real Madrid with 11. So if if Dortmund do get a draw, they will be through as the, the winners. If Real Madrid get a win, then they will be 14 as opposed to Dortmund's 13. So they will have the edge there. In a way, I feel like Real Madrid almost benefit from finishing second in a group. They will be facing a group winner and they cannot play Atletico Madrid and they cannot play Barcelona from them being in the same the same league. Obviously, in the round of 16, you cannot play a team from the same league. So two English sides can't play, two Italian sides, French. You get the gist of it. So if you're looking at Real Madrid finishing second, that puts them against a group winner. So possibly Leicester City, possibly Juventus, Monaco... Maybe like a Napoli, PSG. They cannot play Atletico or Barcelona. So it's almost a better edge if they finish in second. Obviously, they're going to be going for the victory. And you'd imagine so at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium in Madrid. So I, I think almost this game is going to be really close to call. I feel like it can go both ways. We had a draw in the first game 2-2. Two two. Bruce Dortmund got a goal last last minute by Andre Schurle to even it up. So I would imagine that Real Madrid and Bruce Dortmund are going to be going for the victory. You want to try and put out your best performance against a top side like this. But I'm going to I'm going to give the edge to Madrid, maybe if they push for it. I think it'll, it'll depend a lot on the lineup they choose on Wednesday to see kind of where their mindset is. Like I said, it's almost better in my eyes if they get a second place finish because they don't have to worry about playing a side like Atletico or Barcelona. So that limits their chances of facing a weaker side in the match day winners of the group stage. If they were to win, possibly you're looking at a second place team like Arsenal who are dangerous. You know, Bayern Munich are, are second place finishers in their group. So you could be looking at that that at that in the round of 16. That would be a juicy, juicy matchup. So it, it, it's it's almost kind of interesting. I want to see what they do. It's going to be interesting what Zidane Zidane, his match team sheet looks like. I think that will determine a lot of things. And lastly, you're going to look at Group H, the last group. You have Juventus with 11. You have Sevilla with 10 and Lyon with 7 and Dinamo Zagreb with 0. Juve have already clinched a spot in the round of 16. They have not won the group. They will be playing Dinamo Zagreb who have 0 points. So you have to give them the edge. You know that they're going to be playing hard. And I, I will say they do win. With a victory, they will be absolutely through. And then you have Sevilla and Lyon. It could go either way. You know, Leon are still technically alive in it. I do give the edge to Sevilla, though. Sevilla have been a very, very good side all year long, not only in La Liga, but also in the Champions League. Three wins, one loss, and one draw. They're lost coming just to Juve in match day five. So I'll give the edge to Sevilla over Leon. I, 
I I think they're just a much better side. Leon, really just a dangerous threat of Alexander Lacazette. You have to worry about not much more than that right now. Leon not doing too well in League One as well. So I, I'll give the edge to Sevilla. I think it'll be Juventus and Sevilla. I will give the edge to Juventus to win the group. They should have no trouble with Dinamo Zagreb. All right, guys, so that'll that'll take us into our first break after the, the commercial break. We're talking about the results from last week in soccer. We had a lot of great results. Breaking down El Clasico, among others, right here at the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So we have our finalists for the FIFA Men's Player of the Year as well as the Men's Coach of the Year. It's trim it down to our final three we have updated you on the show, so like the other names, but I will start with the players. So the three finalists all come from La Liga, all with different clubs. We have Lionel Messi, the Argentinian from Barcelona. We have Cristiano Ronaldo, the Portuguese left winger for Real Madrid. I also play striker sometimes. And then we have the French striker for Atletico Madrid, Antoine Griezmann. Those are our three finalists for the Men's Player of the Year award. I will give the edge to Cristiano Ronaldo. All of them had great seasons statistically, but you look at Ronaldo, he wins the Champions League final with Real as well as the European Championship with Portugal. Both of them coming over at Let's Go Madrid striker Antoine Griezmann. So poor guy there. He gets two runners up. So I do think that's why Griezmann is a finalist. Great, great year with Atleti and as well as France at the Euros. So that's why I think he'll come in as a finalist. But I will give the edge to Ronaldo. I think he'll win this award. I think Messi probably finishes second. And then Griezmann will finish third. The ceremony is going to be on January 9th. So we have a little over a month. We'll talk about who the winners are for Ballon d'Or, for FIFA Men's Player of the Year. All that stuff and shows to come. And then you look at the Men's Coach of the Year for FIFA. It's trimmed down to three people. You have Claudio Ranieri, the Italian manager who manages Leicester City currently. I mean, there's no real surprise there that he's a finalist. He should win this award after leading Leicester to the Premiership Championship last year. 5,000 to 1 odds were the Foxes of Leicester to win it all, and yet they win it pretty convincingly by 10 points last year. So I I think he's a lock to win this award, just what they had to overcome as a side. I think if there's one sort of knock on Ranieri winning this award, it's Leicester's success this year in the Premier League, or should I say lack of success, they're kind of find them, themselves in a relegation battle as it stands right now. I think a lot of it will determine on today's game between Middlesbrough and Hull City, who are definitely on the bottom of the Premier League table. But we'll have to wait and see. The other two finalists are Fernando Santos of Portugal, obviously managed them to the European Championship, and then Zinedine Zidane of France, who managed Real Madrid to the Champions League final and won it last year. So, And he also has them sitting atop La Liga right now. So I, I guess there's no real surprise in those three finalists. The edge absolutely has to go go to Ron Yuri. There's no reason he shouldn't win this award. Like I said, if there's one knock, it's maybe, just maybe, that Leicester are not doing so well this year in the Premier League. But I really doubt it because it's it's like a it's like an award that goes on all year. Looking at last year as well, so I I think they have the 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 huge edge. Does Ranieri to win this award? And I think he will, and I think he deserves it. Like I said, that will be January 9th in Zurich, Switzerland. So we will update you on those, as well as all the other awards next month. The World Eleven, you know, we have a lot of a lot of great great awards coming up that I'm really excited to talk about and break down. See if they got them right or wrong. Most of the times they get them right, so. We'll have to talk about that. But anyways, guys, we will transition into our review of the week that was in soccer. And actually, guys, you got to start 
with La Liga because we had El Clasico on Saturday. We had Barcelona against Real Madrid live from the Camp Nou in Barcelona. I said it would be a 2-2 draw. I thought that Real would have the edge and then Barca would convert late. Really, it was kind of the opposite. It ended it ended 1-1. Real Madrid get a stoppage time goal from Sergio Ramos. Sergio Ramos just so good at getting these late equalizers. He did it a couple of years ago in the Champions League final against Atletico Madrid. He does it against Barcelona right here to take a point away from Barcelona. Barcelona really dominating. You could say that Real had some chances. They had a penalty shot in the first half by Lucas Vasquez that did not obviously get get called a penalty, but honestly, it should have been. So you had a, a little bit of a glimpse there for Real, a couple of great saves by Marc-Andre Ter Stegen. But nevertheless, it is a 1-1 result. And when you look at the rest of the table, I'm sorry, not the table, but like the, the schedule of the match day 14, this, this matched up really, really well for Real, for Los Blancos. I think they're big winners of match day 14. You have Sevilla, who lose to Granada 2-1. to You have Atletico Madrid getting a 0-0 draw against Espanyol. You have Villarreal getting a 0-0 draw against Leganes. So a lot of the people, a lot of the teams at the top of La Liga get really poor results. So Real keeps their six-point lead in firm tact. You have Sevilla dropping points. So Real gain a point on them. Atletico Madrid don't gain any points on Espanyol, who are mid-table. So it was a really, really good weekend for Real. They played their toughest game of the season, but yet they didn't lose any ground, and they actually gained ground on a lot of sides. So that's a big, big advantage for Real Madrid. For Barcelona, you had you had Andres Iniesta return. He did come off the bench, so he was not. I'm, I'm guessing he was not fully fit. So I guess that's a, a good advantage for Barca since they did miss out on the Spanish midfielder with through an injury recently. They just have not looked the same side. So we'll have to see if maybe Iniesta's return to the starting 11 will sort of catapult them forward and get them playing a lot better. They just don't really look like a good side right now. A 1-1 draw against Real is not a terrible result. They had a chance to win the game. Just this late, late, late equalizer by Ramos is what gave them one point instead of three. So I, I guess it's kind of unfortunate, but I mean... This is soccer, man. A one a one goal lead is never, never safe because all it takes is just that one opportunity to steal things away. And and that's what happened. And it was a great result for Real, like I said. They played their toughest game of the season, but yet they did not lose ground to any of the top teams. So that that's definitely a really good situation. For match day 14, you do have a game today. It's Deportivo La Coruña against Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad sitting really, really good right now in sixth place. With a win, it would catapult them all the way up to fourth. They would jump at Let's Go Madrid with 26 points. If they did win, currently they have 23. So that, that that's a good situation for Sociedad. They're playing Deportivo, who are not a good side at all. They sit 18th right now with 10 points. So have to wait until that goes. That game kicks off in about an hour and a half from now. All right, we're transitioning over to the Premier League. It is, of course, my favorite, so I will start with that. The big matchup this weekend was Manchester City against Chelsea live from the Etihad Stadium in Manchester, and it was not a good day for the host side. They lose to Chelsea 3-1. to Chelsea now eight games in a row they have won since they lost to Arsenal. They are just absolutely on fire. They get goals from Willian, Diego Costa, and Eden Hazard after giving up an own goal through Gary Cahill in the first half. They just absolutely destroy Manchester City 3-1. to And it was pretty bad for Manchester City. You had Sergio Aguero get sent off right at the end of the game. You had Fernandinho get sent off. Just sort of some bad, bad contact with Cesc Fabregas just punching and choking him. And I mean, it was it was not pretty. And that's that's not good for City who, like I said, dropped three points in this game. But have a tough December coming up. You have to imagine maybe there be some appeals, but Aguero and Fernandinho, Fernandinho would each miss about three games. One of those games could be against Arsenal, who sits second right now in the Premier League. So that could be a bad result for City. Not just a loss, but they could miss out on some of their top players, including Sergio Aguero, who in my eyes is the best striker in the Premier League and is always capable of some magic. So a bad result there. Some others on Saturday. You had Sunderland defeat Leicester City 2-1. to one. Like I said, the English champions just not really cutting it out right now, not playing well. They just, I don't know, they just aren't the same team as they were last year. And they see themselves in a relegation battle, 15th right now with 13 points. Sunderland playing really well, another good home win for David Moyes. They are slowly jumping up the table. They sit 18th with 11 points. A few weeks ago, they were dead last. So 
I mean, like I said, they're just slowly moving their way up. Tottenham with a 5-0 victory over Swansea City. Tottenham really regrouping well since their loss last week to Chelsea. You had a couple of goals by Harry Kane as well as Christian Eriksen. Crystal Palace, kind of a surprise here, a 3-0 victory over Southampton. Southampton coming off their win midweek against Arsenal in the EFL Football League Cup. This is a bad result here. Christian Benteke, a couple of goals for the Eagles. It's a good win for Alan Pardew and Crystal Palace, who had lost their last seven. So it's it's definitely a good result. Stoke City with a 2-0 victory over Burnley. You had West Brom with a 3-1 victory over Watford. West Brom playing really, really well right now. Currently sits seventh on the table at 20 points, tied with Everton at eighth. And Arsenal with a 5-1 victory over West Ham at the London Stadium. You had a hat trick and an assist from Alexis Sanchez. The Chilean is playing absolutely fantastic at that striker position. He's got five goals in his last two games. He had a couple last week against Bournemouth. He's playing absolutely fantastic at the striker position, and he's dominating the game. He's absolutely fantastic right now, and Arsenal are playing really well in the league right now. When you look over to Sunday, a couple of surprising results. You had Man United and Everton end 1-1. You had Marouane Fellaini give up a penalty within two minutes right at the end of the game. Leighton Baines converts in the 89th minute to get a 1-1 draw against Man United. United just, like I said, fourth draw now in five games. They're just not playing well. They they only have 21 points through 14 games. That's their worst start ever. They sit six, which you're like, oh, okay, that's not terrible. But when you look how far back they are from the top, they have 21 points. Chelsea have 34. They're only 13 points through 14 games off the top of the Premier League. They are just not a good team right now. All the additions Jose Mourinho made are just not really working out. As Zlatan Ibrahimovic did score yesterday, Paul Pogba has been playing a lot better, but Henrik Mkhitaryan's not even playing, and they're just not really gelling as a side right now. And Mourinho, he's got to find a way to stop this this antics. He just keeps he keeps doing on the sidelines, getting himself banned for a few games now. He he's just he's got to cut it out and stick to managing football. And right now he's not really doing that. The other big, big result this weekend was a huge, huge shock. You had Bournemouth defeat Liverpool 4-3. to three. They get a stoppage time winner from Nathan Ake after Loris Karius drops the ball on a, on a, just a, just kind of a ball into the box he should have easily, easily handled from Stephen Cook. So Bournemouth, a big, big result over Liverpool. Sadio Mane played absolutely fantastic for the Reds. But they just could not get it done. They give up three goals in a matter of just four minutes. And then they get the stoppage time winner by Nathan Ake. A bad result for Liverpool. They they drop all three points. So now you look at the table. You still have Chelsea with 34. They're playing fantastic. Like I said, eight wins in a row. You have Arsenal sitting second with 31, just three points back. Then you have Liverpool and Manchester City both lost with 30. You have Tottenham still kind of edging their way in there with 27 points in fifth. And then United at six with 21. West Brom and Everton in 7th and 8th with 20. And then Stoke City with 19. They've been playing a lot a lot better recently as well. First few games of the season, they were sitting in last place, maybe in a relegation battle. So that's the Premier League. They're, it's really shaping up nicely. The Premier League always so competitive. I mean, you have a matter of five teams separated by just seven points. It's, it's going to get pretty, pretty interesting. We'll have to see how Chelsea continue their impressive run. One team who is also continuing an impressive run they're now winners of nine in a row in the Bundesliga. I don't know what else I can say about this team that has already not been said. And that's Red Bull Leipzig 2-1 to one over Schalke on Saturday. They are back atop the Bundesliga with 33 points. Bayern Munich did get a 3-1 to one victory over Mainz. So they do sit second three points back of Leipzig who are still unbeaten through 13 games. As I mentioned, nine wins in a row. They are literally the Leicester City of this year in soccer, and it's even a bigger underdog story. Like I said, I don't know what else I can say about this team, except that they're just riding a high right now that is going to be really, really tough to beat. Some of these other results in the Bundesliga, we had Hoffenheim. They went 4-0 over Cologne. You had Hamburg, 2-0 over Darmstadt. Hamburg, they get their first victory of the season. So now they sit 17th with 7 points. Ingolstadt with 6. Ingolstadt not really playing well. They lost to Werder Bremen 2-1 to on Saturday. 
You had Hertha BSC with a 3-2 victory over Wolfsburg. Bayer Leverkusen do get a draw against Freiburg 1-1. Dortmund with a big 4-1 victory over Borussia Mönchengladbach. The Battle of the Borussias. So Dortmund get back on track. Another win after their loss last week. So they're playing a little better. They still sit 6th in the Bundesliga. 9 points back of RB Leipzig. Like I said, Bayern Munich are second with 30. You have Hertha Berlin at 27 and third. Hoffenheim still unbeaten, but a lot of draws. Seven draws, only six wins with 25 points. You have Eintracht with 25 points. They sit fifth. Then you have Dortmund in sixth with 24. You have FC Cologne in seventh with 22. And then it kind of drops off. 17, 17, and 17 for Schalke, Bayer Leverkusen, and Maine. It's kind of mid-table, 8, 9, and 10. So the Bundesliga, like I said, we've been talking about for a few weeks now, Alex and I. But also staying really, really competitive. It's nice to really see that they're playing really competitive. And it's not just Bayer Munich and Dortmund who are dominating everything. So it's really nice to see that they're sticking around there and playing really well. I want to transition over to League One, though. We don't talk too much about League One, but there was some surprising results here and some unfortunate news. So you had Montpellier with a 3-0 victory over the defending champs PSG, a really, really poor result. You had Monaco with a 5-0 victory over Bastia. Monaco are the top scorers in all of Europe right now, and it's not even close. They have 49 goals. Next highest is Real Madrid at 37, and then Liverpool at 35. They have resurrected the career of the Colombian striker Radamel Falcao. Through 10 games, he has seven goals. Last couple of years with Chelsea and with Manchester United on loan in the Premier League. I mean, he didn't even find a playing room. He couldn't even get on the pitch. But he goes back to Monaco, and they're playing absolutely fantastic. They do sit second in the group right now after Nice get a 3-0 victory over Toulouse. So you look at the League One table, you have Nice at 39, you have Monaco at 36, PSG at 35. They have their third loss of the season already. It's weird. They they seem to be doing so good against some of the top teams in the Champions League. But in, within their own league, they've already, dro- they already dropped three games, which is a surprise. You don't ever see that from PSG. Such a good side. You know, Unai Emery is still kind of working his way as, as a manager, getting more familiar with his team trying to figure out what he likes and doesn't like in most situations. But it's a surprise. 3-0 to Montpellier, who sit 12th in the league right now with 19 points through 16 games. That's you know that's, that's not really a good situation and not a good result. It, it's, it's just very, very surprising to see that happen from a side who has literally dominated this league for the last few years, especially last year, the year before that. I guess you can maybe tribute some of it to the loss of Zlatan Ibrahimovic but even Edinson Cavani has been playing really well at the striker position and not really missed any opportunities to fill in for Zlatan and he, obviously he's not the capable player Zlatan Ibrahimovic is but he's still a very good striker and he's still playing really well but PSG as a team just just not really cutting it out right now I mean it, it's it's not really going too well for them when you look at Serie A now the Italian league no real surprises here. You have Napoli with a 3-0 victory over Inter Milan. Inter just not a good side right now. You have Juve with a 3-1 victory over Atalanta. Milan continue their, AC Milan that is, they continue their impressive Serie A form with a 2-1 victory over Crotone. Then you have Roma defeating Lazio 2-0. I, as a game I predicted last week that Roma would win. So all the teams within the top four all win. So no real changes. Juve at 36, Roma at 32. AC Milan at 32 as well, and then Napoli 28, Lazio 28, and Atalanta 28 as well. So, I mean, eight eight points differentiate six teams. So that's not too bad, but Juve are still the favorites. Slip up last week against Genoa, but I, they'll be okay. I, I mean, it's Juventus. They are, have the best defense maybe in the world. I think Atletico Madrid as well, but they do not have Leonardo Bonucci right now, do Juve, so that could hurt them Champions League time. It's going to be out a couple of months. But we'll have to wait and see. But as far as Syria, don't think they'll have any trouble, and they're obviously not showing much. So now we will transition over to talk about the MLS. Obviously, we have Seattle already through on the Western Conference side, so they were awaiting the winner of Toronto FC and Montreal. Montreal did win the first leg three to two, but Toronto coming back home. I mean, I guess they're staying in Canada, but back into their home stadium, their home supporting fans. I did think Toronto would overcome that deficit and defeat Montreal, and I was right. On last Wednesday, we had the second leg, 
it was a 5-2 to two victory for Toronto FC, but it did go to extra time. It was an absolutely crazy, crazy game. You had Josie Altador scoring in his fifth consecutive MLS playoff game. The American is in the form of his life right now, and he's playing like it right now for Toronto. Toronto, so much firepower. Sebastian Giovinco, Michael Bradley, Josie Altador is playing fantastic. That puts them in the MLS Cup Final. They will be playing Seattle Sounders on Saturday in the MLS Final. We will preview that right after this break and much more at the Golden State Media Concepts Soccer Podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy dash football dash podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. So we started off the show talking about Chapa Cohen's, obviously the tragic events last week. And I guess you have some more information now. And I guess it's actually good information because they will be awarded the title of Copa Sudamericana after their plane crash, they were on their way to Colombia to obviously compete in the final. It was going to be a two-legged final against the Colombian side, Atletico Nacional, who's actually a rival club. So it's it's actually a really nice result that they are giving them the title, Chapacoans, after the plane crash. They are actually telling them, like, we wanted them to have it. Like, we were sort of petitioning for them to have it. The CON... M-E-B-O-L announced that they will be given an award for fair play. Will Atletico Nacional... And they will actually award this this Copa America Subamericana to Chapacoans, which is absolutely fantastic. You know, it's 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 a nice thing. It's a great thing that they did, and obviously, with, given their tragic events last week, killing 19 of their players, it's it's something that you kind of like tip your hat to, especially for a rival side. Like I can imagine like Manchester City and Manchester United, a great rivalry. You have El Clasico, you have Madrid, you have Daryl Classicer. Like imagine one of these teams doing the same thing for a different for the other side. It'd be something that's, you know, obviously really, really hard to do. Obviously you're a, a rival side. But at the end of the day, you put your feelings aside about the clubs and everything and you have to realize you're just people core to the heart. And to do that is it's it's a great, great acknowledgement and I'm actually great that I saw that and I saw it happen and I mean, it's definitely something that's really, really nice. So, congrats to Copa Sumericana champions Chapacoins. So, hats goes off to them. Although it'd be an unfortunate situation, they are the champions of the Copa Sumericana. So, anyways, that will trans that will transfer us into talking about the upcoming week in soccer. Another great, great weekend scheduled. We will first jump off with the Premier League. We have Watford playing Everton on Saturday, Swansea City against Sunderland. We have Burnley against Bournemouth. Arsenal will be hosting Stoke City. We have Hull City battling Crystal Palace off their win. Leicester City against Manchester City. A result last year at Leicester City did win. Obviously, Man City, as I mentioned last time, will be without a couple of their best players this year in Fernandinho as well as Sergio Aguero will be facing bands. Then you move over to Sunday. You have Chelsea against West Brom. Chelsea seeing if they can go for their ninth in a row. Southampton will be battling Middlesbrough who played later today against Hull City. You have Manchester United against Tottenham. I guess you could say that's the the biggest game of the weekend. You have number five and number six in the Premier League, respectively, in Tottenham and Manchester United. Manchester United, a case of the draws, four out of the last five. Tottenham, although they've drawn all year pretty much, a couple of good wins in their last few games against West Ham and then last week against Swansea City. So we'll have to see how they do against Man United, who definitely need a positive result. And then Liverpool will be battling West Ham. West Ham, really, really a disappointing season to open up the brand new London Stadium. They're in a relegation battle themselves. They fit. They sit 17th with 12 points. You have Hull City and Millsboro playing a little later who are 12 and 11. So we'll have to wait and see. Maybe they could be in that relegation spot if things do not go right for them. If Hull City do get a point, maybe even a victory. Well, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but... 
That will be later today. So that takes us in to now we'll look at the Bundesliga. So for next week, we have Eintracht against Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim look to continue their nice, nice start. RB Leipzig will be going for their 10th straight against Ingolstadt, who sit last place in the Bundesliga. So you have to imagine they will be in a very, very good situation to stay atop the Bundesliga table. We'll have to wait and see, obviously. Bayern Munich will be playing Wolfsburg. Freiburg will be playing Darmstadt. We have Hamburg off their first victory of the season against Augsburg. FC Cologne will be placing Borussia Dortmund. We have Hertha Berlin against Werder Bremen. We have Borussia Mönchengladbach against Mainz on Sunday, as well as Schalke against Bayer Leverkusen. A really good matchup there in the Bundesliga. Like I said, Bundesliga is so, so competitive this year. A lot of teams are... Obviously, you look at Leipzig, I guess you can say now, and also Bayern Munich, who are really competing at the top. But everyone's kind of competitive there in that top half of the Bundesliga, which is great to see. Nice to see that Bundesliga is not so too team-dominated. Now you look at La Liga. We have a game on Friday. It's Malaga against Granada. Then you move over to Saturday, where there's four games on the schedule. You have Osasuna against Barcelona. Barcelona looking to get a victory after they've gotten a lot of draws lately in La Liga. You have Real Sociedad against Valencia. Las Palmas will be playing Leganes. Real Madrid will be playing Deportivo La Coruña. We have Sunday matchups. Ibar against Alaves. Celta Vigo against Sevilla. Who, Sevilla playing absolutely fantastic. Espanyol against Sporting Guion. We have Real Betis against Atletico Bilbao. And then Monday, really, in my eyes, the matchup of the match day number 15 in La Liga. It's a Monday matchup, so maybe we can preview a little bit next week with Alex. But it's Villarreal against Atletico Madrid. Villarreal sitting in 5th. Atleti sitting in 14, just separated by 2 points. So that could go a long ways by separating maybe like a Champions League spot. I do think Atleti are still in a really good situation, a really good spot. You know, it's still kind of early in the La Liga schedule, only 14 games through. But they're not really playing it like we've seen them play over the last few years. And they got to try and turn it around. Have to see how they do against Villarreal. Maybe a big win against a top side like that can kind of catapult them going forward. We will have to wait and see. I want to talk about French League One now. As I mentioned, we had Monaco. They've been playing absolutely fantastic. The top scorers in Europe, they'll be playing Bordeaux on a Saturday. On Sunday is really the big game. You have PSG against Nice. PSG sitting in third. Nice are your league leaders right now at 39. PSG off their loss to Montpellier 3-0. Not a very good result, but, I mean, it is Paris Saint-Germain. They are still a very, very good side. In my eyes, still the top side in France. And I have to imagine they're going to be playing really well. Maybe they can knock Nice off that top spot. Obviously, you look at Nice, just the one loss, still at 39 points. If Monaco get a victory, they'll they'll obviously go top because they have that goal differential of 33 compared to 20. I mean, you have to imagine that they could stay, stay on top unless there's like a, a drastic change there. They, like I said, they are playing Bordeaux, who are, are not terrible. They're sitting in seventh right now, 24 points through 16 games, which isn't bad, but obviously... There's a lot better sides. So you got to imagine that Monaco will continue their impressive goal-scoring form and beat Bordeaux. But I think PSG could really beat Nice. You know, Nice are, are still a good side, playing a lot better this year. But PSG are still the top side in France, and they're always a force to be reckoned with. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. And then lastly, before I preview the MLS Cup Final, which I'll end the show with, I want to talk about Serie A. Serie A, a big, big day on Sunday. A lot of very important games. But on Saturday, we have Lazio against Sampdoria. You have Crotone against Pescara. And then on Sunday, a couple of the big matchups. You have Torino against Juventus. You look at Torino and Juventus. Juve, obviously, the leaders. Torino sitting at 7th with 25 points. So they're not doing too bad, although they are 11 points off of Juve. Still a very good side, always capable of doing a lot of good things. Atalanta will be playing Udinese. And on Monday is the biggest matchup in my eyes. It kicks off at 12 Pacific time, so noon. It's Roma and AC Milan. Roma sitting in second, AC Milan in third. Both of them have 32 points. So they're, like I said, they're both playing really well. I will give the edge to Roma. I will say Roma wins that. Obviously, we'll talk about it more next week. But a victory here could definitely separate the two of them. Right now, they're even. Obviously, a victory would put them three points atop whoever wins. So it, it could be a really, really good result. I mean, we'll have to wait and really see how it goes. I do think Roma will win over AC Milan. AC Milan, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with them this year. Playing a lot better in Serie A, as they, they haven't really done in the last couple of years. Kind of resurrecting their program, their club. So I'm really happy to see that such a historic franchise really for the last 
you know, few years, Champions League success and everything, and really just some domestic success in Italy. So I want to talk about the MLS Cup final now. As I mentioned, it is on December 10th, which is on Saturday. You have the Seattle Sounders against Toronto FC. I will give the edge to Toronto. I think they will win. You have, you're have you going to have a first-time winner, both teams being in their first-ever cup final. So I will give the edge to Toronto FC. I realize Seattle have been playing really, really good recently, ever since the All-Star break. And they will have a little bit more of a break. Obviously, you have maybe a couple of week break as opposed to a week and a half. So I will give the edge to Toronto FC, though, as opposed to Seattle. I think they just have more playable, capable playmakers. Josie Outdoor is playing fantastic. You still have Sebastian Giovinco, who's the best player, will be the best player on the pitch. You have Nico Ladero and Clint Dempsey, among others, for Seattle. But I don't think they can keep up with Toronto. I think it'll be a high-scoring game. I do I do think that. I think we're looking at maybe like a, a 3-1, to one, maybe a 4-2 to two kind of game. I, I do think we're going to see some goals. Maybe not so much like we did against Toronto and Montreal, but... I do think we'll see some goals. I don't think we'll be going to extra time or anything. I think we'll end it at 90 minutes. And I think the winners will be Toronto. I'm going to say man of the match. I'm going to give it to Altidore. He's been playing fantastic. I think he'll continue his success. He's a guy who's capable and knows what it takes to play in big games. And I think he's got a better team around him than Clint Dempsey and Nico Ladero do with Seattle. So I'll give the edge there to Toronto FC. We will have to wait and see, though, because we will update you next week on the show with our MLS cup final winners as well as all the other great news in the wide world of soccer right here with the golden state media concept soccer podcast that is going to end our show today guys my name is ben brown for alex who is not here we are signing off we will see you next week enjoy your soccer and have a good day goodbye you've been listening to the golden state media concepts soccer podcast Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.